Hey Zion, welcome to What's in a Name. This is a devotion series where we're looking at the different names of God in order that we can understand the nature of God better and we can have a fuller understanding of God and how we pray to Him. And so yeah, hope you learned something. Today we're looking at Yahweh Yura, a much, much better known by the Latin Jehovah Jireh. And I think you're going to learn something today because when I started researching this, I thought I was going to bring a completely different devotion than I'm bringing today. Um, and that's because I actually think this name is actually really misunderstood. You see, and if you've been in Christian circles for very long at all, you would have heard people say, Jehovah Jireh, God our provider. And whenever you hear Jehovah Jireh, or more accurately, Yahweh Yira, um, it's all about God being our provider. So anyway, I started researching for this particular video and I discovered something. You see that word Yira, or Jireh, Yira, is in the Bible 45 times. 45 times. And do you know what? 43 of them, it's translated as seas. As in you look from your eyes and you see something. 43 times it's translated as seas. And depending on the translation, once or twice is it translated as provides. So let's have a look at this God sees for a start. And I'm going to use a few uh, scriptures upon this. So sometimes it's um, Yahweh Yira, God sees, and the examples I'm using are all from that. Other times it's just somebody saw something. Um, and that word Yura is used as well. And let's look at the time when Samuel goes to select the new king of Israel. And he He's been told to go to Jesse's place and anoint one of Jesse's sons. And he sees one of the older boys and he thinks, Man, look at this fella. He looks big and strong. He's got to be the next king. But let's read 1 Samuel 16, 7. But the Lord said to Samuel, Do not consider his appearance or his height, for I have rejected him. The Lord does not look at the things people look at. People look at the outward appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart. And when it says in the Bible, the Lord looks at the heart, do you want to know the words that we use? Well, it was Yahweh Yura. Okay, now we're going to stick with David now um, and l look at a time where he was running from his son Absalom. Okay, and let's read 2 Samuel 16, uh, starting verse 11. Then David said to Ishmael and to all his servants, My own son is trying to kill me. Doesn't this relative of Saul have even more reason to do so? Leave him alone and let him curse. For the Lord has told him to do it. And perhaps the Lord will see that I am being wronged and will bless me because of these curses today. And when it says, and perhaps the Lord will see, well, that's Jehovah Jireh or Yahweh Yura. The Lord will see. So that's another example of, of Yura being used as the Lord sees. I've got one more. And that's found in Proverbs uh, 24, 17 and 18. Do not gloat when your enemy falls, when they stumble. Do not let your heart rejoice, or the Lord will see and disapprove and turn his wrath from them. And when it says, the Lord will see, that's Yahweh Yura, Jehovah Jireh. So here's three examples of Yahweh Yura, and all of them, it's the Lord sees. So the time that it is translated as provides is found in Genesis chapter 22. And it's a story of Abraham's faith being tested, where he's been asked to sacrifice Isaac um, as a burnt offering, his promised son he was asked to sacrifice. 
Um, and let's read this passage and then I think that C's is going to be a better translation in this passage too. So we'll read it as it's written for a start and then we'll go back and I'll explain why I think that Yahweh Yura should be God sees even in this particular circumstance. So Genesis 22 verse 6, Abraham took the wood for the burnt offering and placed it on his son Isaac and he carried himself the fire and the knife. As the two of them went on together, Isaac spoke up and said to his father Abraham, Father, yes my son, Abraham replied. The fire and the wood are here, Isaac said, but where is the lamb for the burnt offering? Abraham answered, God himself will provide the lamb for the burnt offering, my son. And the two of them went on together. So here's the first time in this chapter we see that word yura. It's used further down in the chapter, but this is the one that gives us the best context. And interesting enough, when it says God, it's actually the word Elohim. It's not Yahweh in this instance. Uh, later in the chapter it is. But, but this is where we get the context for the meaning of the chapter. And I think if we substitute the word provide with C's, we get a better understanding of what's going on in this chapter. And in actual fact, early translations of the Bible had the word seize in there. Um, this is a pre-King James and the King James Version it is provide. Um, but yeah, early translations have seized. Somewhere along the line somebody, a translator, has thought that provide might fit better. And do you know what happens when you translate the Bible? Well you, you also look at other translations as well. Um, so people would have done that and that's why this word has continued to be provided. But let's read it in the context of God sees. The fire and wood are here, Isaac said, but where is the lamb for the burnt offering? Abraham answered, God himself will see a lamb for the burnt offering, my son. And I think if we look at this, when Abraham says God will see a lamb, I believe in Abraham's mind is when he was sacrificing Isaac, God would see a lamb there instead of his son. Now why do I think this? Well for one, if Abraham had been expecting God to provide another lamb, he would have found it already. Because if we read on, they found a lamb in the thicket just over there from where they were. In fact, Abraham got to the point where he's about to sacrifice his son and God says, no, don't do it. And when, and he said, look up. And he looked up and he saw a lamb. Now, had he been expecting God to provide that lamb before that, he should have seen it already. So that's one reason um, that sees as a better because in Abraham's mind, Isaac was the sacrifice. Okay, and it also explains why he got to that point and God had to say no because he was actually prepared to go through with what he felt God was telling him to do. So, but look, this is a story of provision. Because whilst God sees, where God sees, he actually does provide. So don't think I'm saying that God is not a provider because God is a provider. What I'm saying is for Yahweh Yura, actually sees as a better translation. But how does this apply to Jesus? But do you know who did sacrifice his son in order that we can have eternal life? Yes, God did. God sacrificed his son Jesus in order that we could have a way to the Father. And that's where there's parallels of Jesus and there's a, a prophetic message about Jesus in Yahweh Yura. Because you see, when you, when you translate it as God sees a lamb, well, 
When we come to the cross, we lay our sin, we lay our shame before Jesus, before the cross. Well, what does God see? He sees our lamb. He doesn't see our sin. He doesn't see our shame. No, he sees a lamb and that lamb is Jesus Christ. So whenever you think of this story and Yahweh, you're you think, and it says God will see a lamb, think of Jesus Christ on the cross because when Jesus is on the cross, the lamb of God taking our sin, taking our shame away, think Yahweh, you're a, God sees a lamb and the salvation and freedom and healing all to be found in God seeing a lamb. Awesome. So God is a God that sees. And look, there is provision in them seeing. But we should pray, I think, when we pray Yahweh Yira or we pray Jehovah Jireh, if we really like praying in Latin, um, then we should be praying it as God sees. Okay, and you know, he there's provision in God seeing. Um, it's definitely we shouldn't be looking at a new car and going, Jehovah Jireh, God needs to provide that for me. No, that is completely out of context, even if the translation of provides is a good one. That's not the context, the context is, is providing for salvation, not our material needs. Uh, but as I say, God sees as a better translation and you know that God already knows what you need let's read Matthew 6 7 when you pray don't babble on as the Gentiles do they think their prayers are answered merely by repeating their words again and again don't be like them for your father knows exactly what you ask even before you ask him so look God sees you Yahweh Yura God sees and he's able to provide hey Bless your heaps. Please subscribe to see more of this. Hope you learned something from this. I certainly did. And look, if you, are you in need of provision and you want to pray a name of God upon that need of provision? I think El Shaddai is the name you should pray. And the video for it is right there.